were Mandy and Kyle. We finally decided to follow through with a dream we've had for the past decade and a half. To go and see the world. In 2022, we took a huge leap into the unknown. We sold practically everything we owned and embarked on a new journey. With the kids and our dog Penelope, we moved across the ocean to Portugal. Now, travel is a lifestyle for us, as we experience new cultures and meet people all over the world. This week, we drove from Lisbon, Portugal to Spain to explore one of the country's most iconic cities. Known for its rich history, vibrant food scene, and warm weather, this city is bustling with life. as we soak up the culture of beautiful Seville, Spain. I'm just going to go ahead and say what needs to be said. I think Spain is my favorite country that we have ever been to. Everywhere you turn in the city, it's, there are these orange trees that are, they just, they make everything smell amazing. Every single street we've been on just smells really, really good and there's just, Crowds of people smiling, happy, eating food. I mean, how could you not love it? Of course, our first stop was food, and we found a delicious breakfast spot called Moya. Luck was on our side as Moya has mouth-watering offerings of waffles, toasts, and eggs. And of course, a wide variety of coffee drinks to choose from. Um, so far we have tasted some espresso, some batch brew, salmon benedict. We've got, now has a beet latte. We got eggs. Tomatoes, grilled tomatoes, that had spinach, some mushrooms, avocado, and a little olive oil and sour jam. Nice, a little bit of everything. Straight after breakfast, we booked a flamenco lesson taught by a local professional dancer. We found ourselves turned around and a little lost in the city on our way. But as it turns out, the locals were friendly and ran out to help us navigate where to go. Ah, uh, we're at these. It. We got really lost, but they helped. But we got to our flamenco class two hours really by mistake. <laughs> and so we're leaving now. As we had some time to kill, we decided to do some exploring and do what we do best, eat. Bar El Comercio had the most delicious smells wafting from the kitchen. And we stopped in to order what they're known for churros dripping with chocolate sauce. This is amazing. It's a little bit different than the churros I'm used to. Crispier, flakier. That double double bite. dipper. Mm. Double dipper. But now it was time to return to our flamenco lesson.
Flamenco a Compas offers visitors a chance to learn the art of flamenco. Our teacher was well versed in the history and technique of flamenco and was very patient with us as we had no idea what we were doing. And here we are in our school, Flamenco a Compas. How long have you been dancing? So I started like 15 years ago, more or less. When I saw Flamenco live yeah. at the show, I was completely amazed. Yeah. And I saw the dancer and everything moved inside me and I thought, I just want to do this. Was it a, like, a way to kind of like rebel or was it all these cultures coming together in a melting pot to uh -huh. kind of create it together? You can say it's like both, because flamenco has this uh, emotional charge. It's speaking about the human condition and the, the feelings that you have daily, yeah? About the anger or about the happiness. There are also like some uh, verses of flamenco uh, speaking about social injustice, about politics. Uh, they may be jolly and uh, cheerful, but there is some hint of uh, irony as well. I just wanted to say that you can express all the spectrum of human emotions by yeah. Now that we had learned the basics, we decided to leave it to the pros and attend a live flamenco show in the city. All the dancing made us work up an appetite and we were ready to experience what Spain is known for, tapas. We happened upon a local restaurant called Catalina where the atmosphere was buzzing. So we happily joined in and ordered everything in sight. The region of Andalusia is famous for many things, and one of them is horses. These beautiful gentle giants captured our hearts straight away.
riding through the olive groves of the Andalusian countryside was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. The farm was peaceful, and there were a variety of animals looking for cuddles and a pat on the head. That, I can't even put words into it. It was unbelievable. Why? Like, you would be riding, and then the wind would hit you, and then, like, you just see this beautiful view. Here, time stood still, and you could feel the heartbeat of the country. It's time for more tapas. On our ongoing quest to find more of the best tapas in the city, we stopped by the highly revered Bar Alfalfa to grab some lunch. This place is so hopping, there's probably 30 people in there, room for 20, and we had to get it to go. Let's go find a quiet spot and try them. Look at how amazing this looks. Walnuts, kiwis, asparagus. Oh, let's take a bite. It's the tidiest. Yeah. Let's try it. Let's get a little bit of something and everything. <laughs> if we can. Yeah, I don't think I get much in there. Here we go. Mm. Asparagus and kiwi, it works. Mm. It's crunchy. It's really, really fresh. What, honestly, it might be one of the best salads I've had. There's a lot going on in here. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. The next thing we're going to try is the seafood paella. Now, paella is at every tapas bar around the city, but this place is so highly recommended, it's got to be good. It's got a big piece of, I think that might be octopus. Seafood flavor is really, really strong in all the right ways. Okay, we had paella at a different place a few days ago, and honestly, it was kind of like left me wondering why people liked it. This is amazing. This is like a 9.4 out of 10. I mean, they said this is one of the most popular items. It is the vegetarian bruschetta. We've got garlic, tomatoes, eggplant, arugula. Mm -hmm. So fresh, so fresh. Outside of the ingredients, there's not a whole lot of seasoning, not a lot of salt, not a lot of pepper or flavor, but that's okay because it lets this stuff shine. Really, really, really good. Cheers. All I'm going to say is I'm about to go into a store and we are in big trouble. Just take all my money. It is the most gorgeous store. I have every seat. Oh my gosh. In the heart of Seville, we found this beautiful fabric and home decor shop. Inside, the walls are lined with luxurious velvet textiles and handmade garments and bags. I was ready to take one of everything home, but as my suitcase wouldn't allow, I had to pick only one thing to purchase. So happy right now at this bag. Oh, I love it so much. It looks so beautiful. It's just, it's perfect. A 
trip to Seville wouldn't be complete without seeing the Royal Alcazar. Starting in the 10th century, this palace took over 500 years to build. To this day, it's the oldest royal palace still in use in all of Europe. The grounds of Alcazar display an architectural anthology of the palace's rich history. Everywhere you turn, you see the religious influence within its beautiful walls and gates. On this trip, Spain once again captured our imaginations. The people we met were friendly, warm, and welcoming. We marveled at the rich and vibrant artistic culture. The food we ate was delicious and memorable. The art and architecture was some of the most beautiful we have ever laid our eyes upon. We were amazed at Spain's connection to the earth and all its creatures who inhabit the beautiful countryside. Spain reminded us why we do what we do. How travel is one of life's greatest gifts. us why we've moved our family across the ocean, looking to explore, experience, taste, and see everything we can. So what's next for us? Where will the road lead us up ahead? We can't tell you for sure. What we do know is this, we will be ready to welcome whatever it is with open arms. Mm -hmm.